Y'all know me, I'm Dr. B, and this is The Buzz on Oral Herpes. Herpes sores, or cold sores, are caused by an infection with herpes simplex virus. There's two types of herpes simplex virus. This is type one, which mostly causes sores on the lips and inside the front of the mouth, and that's what we call cold sores. And then there's type two, which mo causes mostly genital lesions. We're not gonna talk about those today, we're just gonna stick to type one. Herpes simplex virus type one is usually passed by close contact like kissing or sharing food or drinks or utensils. Uh, it's also passed by people who are wrestlers, wrestlers because they're in close contact or anyone who plays a contact sport can pass this kind of thing. Uh, it can be spread even if there are no obvious lesions and it's very contagious. Somewhere in 90 to 95% of people worldwide have antibodies to the HSV-1 virus, which means that at some point, even if they didn't know it, they had a cold sore or they had an infection with herpes virus. Most of the time, an infection with HSV-1 won't show any symptoms at all. It may show a little ulcer inside the lip or on the tongue, uh, or there may be like one or two cold sores, uh, but sometimes this will go just completely unnoticed. Unfortunately, there are some cases where, uh, especially when kids get the virus for the first time, it can cause a lot of swelling and sores on the lips and uh, all through the mouth, especially in the front of the mouth. When you have it all over like that, we call it herpes stomatitis, which means uh, inflammation of the mouth. Uh, it's very painful. These kids often don't want to eat, and that is a danger because they can get dehydrated because of that. Now, infection is permanent. Once you get this, you will keep the virus inside you. But the immune system, a healthy immune system, can keep the virus dormant so that it's not showing these sores all the time. Unfortunately for some people, they can get recurrent cold sores, and they show up usually on the lips because the immune system just can't keep it completely dormant in some people. Here's some pictures of what those lesions look like. Uh, the, usually it's clusters of painful blisters on a red base. And you can see here on the lip, you got a little couple, two, three blisters and some reddish uh, areas surrounding that. And that's what, usually what we're looking for. Usually they'll see, you'll see them on the lip and right at the border between the lip and the skin. You can see with this arrow and there's uh, right at that edge, it's what we call the vermilion border between the pink of the lips and the uh, regular colored skin. Often kids will say that they feel some burning or itching on the skin even before the lesion shows up and then you get these painful bumps. Usually the lesions last one or two weeks if they're not treated and there are some triggers for getting recurrent cold sores. Emotional stress, uh, fever and illness can all be triggers for outbreaks of cold sores. Sun exposure is a very important one Make sure to wear sunscreen and put it on the lips as well and around the lips. Zinc oxide is a very safe one to do that with. We watch episode 17 of this, of this podcast for our sunscreen recommendations, but zinc oxide is what we would use to prevent this kind of problem. Hormone changes like being at different uh, times in the menstrual cycle or with pregnancy, those can also be triggers. Skin injury or trauma or lip injury. Maybe you went to the dentist, got a little roughed up there. Uh, and uh, had an outbreak of a cold sore. That kind of thing can happen. And finally, weaken the immune system and physical fatigue. Physical fatigue also weakens the immune system. So making sure that you get, uh, that the child gets plenty of sleep. These are all things that you want to make sure of to keep these outbreaks from happening so often. Now, HSV-1, we talk about it causing uh, oral lesions. It can cause genital lesions, but usually it's, it's around the uh, oral area. It can also, however, cause lesions in different areas of the body. And these lesions are named based on where they're seen. Sores on the fingers, like in someone who chews their nails, this is called herpes whitlow. These lesions look a lot like the hand, foot, and mouth we saw in the last lecture, but uh, this is usually just on one finger, whereas hand, foot, and mouth will be spread all over. Eye infections can occur, and this is herpes near the eye. If it gets onto the eye itself, this can cause permanent scarring, which are called herpes keratitis. So we're very aggressive with this. People with eczema can get uh, widespread lesions, uh, like on this child who had them all over the areas where the eczema was. So the, so the herpes didn't just stick around the mouth, it actually spread onto the skin. This is called 
eczema herpeticum. And a couple more here. People who play contact sports, like we mentioned earlier, football and wrestling can get lesions from close contact. This is called herpes gladiatorum or uh, gladiator herpes. Kind of an interesting name. And finally, you can sometimes see lesions uh, of herpes virus on the top of a scalp. This is on a baby. Anyone have any idea how this might happen? That's right, this can happen when someone with a cold sore kisses a baby on top of the head, so be very careful about that kind of thing. Now, from watching episode six of this podcast, because I know you've watched all of them, you know that we don't have great treatment for most viral problems. However, for herpes simplex virus one, we do have some pretty good antiviral therapies. And the reason we're going to treat uh, herpes is because it's very painful. It lasts for a long time, sometimes a few weeks. And we don't want you to spread it to anyone else or, or uh, have uh, your child give it to anyone else at daycare or at school. Acyclovir is the original anti-herpes medicine. And it also works for other types of herpes like herpes zoster, also known as chicken pox. But acyclovir is used in an oral form for those uh, recurrent outbreaks or sores all through the mouth. It also comes as a cream or an ointment for mild outbreaks around the lips. Uh, for severe infections, if a child has uh, contracted herpes as a newborn, or if it's in, in or near the eye, or for encephalitis, which means brain infection, then there is an IV form that can be used when the child is hospitalized. The other anti-herpes medicine we see often and use often is valacyclovir. That's an oral form, and it has fewer doses, fewer side effects, because you don't have to take so much all at once, and that's used for oral outbreaks as well. Well, that's all you need to know about herpes simplex virus type 1. Stay away from those cold sores. Do not share drinks. Do not share forks. Do not share uh, food, uh, lip balm, anything that comes near your mouth. Please get your own, okay? And also watch for any kind of recurrent uh, or new outbreaks of blisters with a little redness, clusters of blisters, a little redness around it. Could be herpes simplex virus. You want to talk to your doctor if you see that kind of thing. Thanks for watching today and uh, come back next time. I think we're talking about tick removal. We're about to get into tick season. You're going to want to know how to remove those ticks safely and quickly. So come back next time. Thanks for watching today. This is Dr. B and this has been The Buzz on Parenting and Pediatrics. See you next time.